One of the most confusing things for the average homeowner is understanding what to connect where. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at what devices get connected and where they get connected. Let's start by simplifying the process and putting each device into one of two categories, inputs and outputs. An output device sends a signal to an input device. Examples of output devices would be cable boxes, DVD players, Blu-ray players, gaming consoles, CD players, iPods, or cameras. Each of these devices will have some type of audio or video jack, which is often labeled as an output. TVs and home theater receivers are input devices. If you don't have a home theater receiver, the process is rather simple. Each of your output devices, like your cable box or DVD player, will be connected directly to your television. Most audio video devices have HDMI connections. HDMI cables carry both audio and video signals in just one cable. Only one cable needed for each output device to the television. This is an example of what an HDMI cable looks like. And these are the ports on the back of a receiver will be very similar to what they look like on the back of a television. The process gets more involved when dealing with surround sound or in the instance of having more output devices than inputs on a television. Here we have a receiver that can be used to collect several outputs. The receiver acts like a large switch for all of your devices, making it easy to go from watching cable to watching a movie to listening to music. Let's jump right in and look at a receiver and the many options of inputs. Here again you will see the input jacks for an HDMI. We also have one output jack, which we'll discuss later. If your output device doesn't have an HDMI, then you may need to use two cables to get both your audio and video signals sent to the receiver. Older and non-high definition devices should have one of two video jacks either a component or a composite jack. This is a component jack labeled as yellow and these are composite jacks, the green, blue, and red. Use component connections whenever possible as they carry a much better resolution than composite cables. So in this instance I have both an option for component or a composite. So in this instance I would want to use my component jacks. Plugging from this device into the proper input labeled on the receiver. This is a DVD player so I would plug this from here to the input labeled DVD across the top which is number one in this instance. This handles the video portion. Next you'll need to send audio from this device to the receiver. We have a couple different options for audio jacks. Here we have an optical and a digital jack. These two are needed to reproduce the proper surround sound signal. This is your stereotypical stereo jack, which is just a left and right audio jack. This is not intended for surround sound use. This, however, is good for such things as CD players and iPods. Now let's actually go through a setup. On this device, we actually have an HDMI output. So here we would want to go HDMI out of this device into our receiver. Now since we said HDMI carries both our audio and video signal, we're essentially done with this device. We have another device here which does not have HDMI and we're forced to make a decision between component or composite. Here we've already said that our better option is to go component. So we're going to simply connect these three cables, green, blue, and red, from here into the appropriate input on the receiver down here. Now, this is only our video portion. We're also going to need to send audio down. So we'll look and we'll have three options for audio that we talked about 
the coax, the optical, and the stereo. This has stereo jacks, but it also has a digital coax jack, which may be difficult to see. So we'll unplug this temporarily. So here, I'll go from this coax jack here, and I'll find my corresponding coax jack down here as an input. We'll plug these guys back in. The nice thing about this is that all of this stuff is color coordinated. And all you really need to look for is to make sure that you're, if you're plugging into a jack on your video side that's labeled DVD, that you're going to also correspond your audio into a jack that also says DVD. So that when you turn it on, you will see and hear the audio and video from that device. So this is simply how you set these up. From there, you're going to go to the front of your receiver, and you'll use the receiver. The front of the receiver has a device button on it. That device is actually a knob which will allow you to turn inputs from all your different devices. So in this instance, we only have two devices hooked up here, a cable box and a DVD player. But you may have other things, like a CD player or a, a tape player or an iPod. I would recommend testing out these connections before cleaning up all your wires and pushing this equipment back into the cabinet. Turn on all your equipment and turn on all the inputs and make sure you toggle through all the different devices using the knob on the front of the receiver to select the appropriate input to test to make sure each device is working properly. Those are the basics for hooking up a component to the home theater system. If you have any other questions, please email us or visit mancavesav.com to post your questions or learn more. Until next time, I'm Brett Guthrie with Man Caves. The final connection you'll need to make from these devices is from your receiver to your television. We're going to simply take an HDMI cable, plug it to the one that says monitor out on the back of your receiver, and then we're going to come over to the television. We're going to take the other end of this cable we're going to plug it into one of your HDMI connections on the back of the television. So those are the basics for hooking up your components to your home theater system. If you have any other questions, please email me or visit us at mancavesav.com to post any of your questions.